All right, so let's talk about importing session data with the intent of keeping a cohesive sound for an artist across multiple tracks. All right, so I've talked about importing session data before in other contexts within other videos, but I wanted to talk about this context specifically today. So basically, if you're going to import session data, right, you go File, Import Session Data, or you can just do Option, Shift, and then I, or you can do Alt, Shift, I if it's on a Windows machine, I believe. And then you just find the PTX file, so the actual Pro Tools session file for the data that you want to import, right? So the way I'm using it here is, in this example, this is a song by an artist. I have mixed multiple songs for them before. So I already have, for example, piano tracks that I have um, made a sound for them um, using plugins on the track. And it's a lot easier to just import that track specifically, that data specifically, so that I can then just pull the plugins over and then tweak them so they fit this iteration of the piano, right? You always have to adjust them and check the settings on the plugins. You can't just blindly copy them over. But it's, it's a better starting point than starting from scratch again. And it's a much easier way to get something that sounds similar to the other tracks in place. So it's a great way to keep that sound cohesive. Um, and you don't have to do as much back and forth, stuff like that. It's just, um, I don't know, I found it to be one of my favorite ways to maintain a sound across multiple tracks. So what I like to do um, in this example, I might show you on the piano, but I would go through for each of these instruments. and I'd be like, all right, what song does this artist also have strings in? And then which song that has strings has the most similar sound or similar uh, effects processing to what I want on this sound specifically, right? Because depending on the song, you might want to treat it a little differently. Um, that does happen. So I just look for, um, um, what's the most similar and then I'll use I'll import that data and use that as a jumping point and um, again you know always make sure to adjust those plugins you don't want to just blindly copy them over and call it a day you're gonna have to adjust it for this recording specifically so I'm gonna go I'm gonna import into the piano right so I'm gonna click on the piano track because whenever things are imported or you make a new track it's gonna make it below the one that you have selected so I'm just gonna click on the piano uh, nameplate here and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to do Option Shift I to import. And I'm just going to find another song where I like the treatment of the piano. So this track had piano. So I'm going to go to my most recent Pro Tools session here for this track. And I'm going to select that. I believe it had piano. And what I'm just doing is I kind of skip over all this stuff. You want to make sure it looks OK. Um, but basically, you're finding the track that you want to copy over. So I'm going to scroll down here. These are all the tracks from the other song, right, that I might want to import. So here's um, Oregon, Oregon, piano. So I'm going to click on piano. I like to have it just go to a new track. Click on piano chorus, piano aux piano parallel compression, and then that's that. So now I have those tracks. These are all of the piano tracks with all of the processing that I put on them. And then I also like to make sure that I'm not importing those main playlists. So I don't need the audio from the other song. I just want the actual tracks with the plugins on them. Like I'm pretty much targeting the plugins here. Um, so, and some of the like options like sends and input outputs, stuff like that. Um, so I'm gonna do that and I'm gonna hit okay. And so now it's imported for me a blank track here. So I have the piano track with the processing that I had on it, the same outputs um, and inputs. And then I have those aux tracks, right, that I imported. And one thing that you'll notice with this is it's going to import automation. So what I like to do is just highlight and then delete it. So I'll click here, do shift enter to highlight to the beginning and then hit delete. Shift, enter, delete. And obviously we're gonna have to do our own automation for this song specifically. We're gonna have to adjust these levels to match this song. And then also the other thing I like to do is um, I'll check and see if there's any playlists here. So since they don't have any playlists, I don't have to worry about losing any takes. But um, I like to do that just to make sure I'm not losing any audio. Um, if there were playlists here, I would then make the decision between um, you know, just hiding and making this inactive after I do something like command C and then I hit the semicolon to go down and then command V to paste it. Or I will um, sometimes instead of doing it that way, what I'll do is I'll hold option to drag these plugins over onto this track. And then I'll be like, do I want the same input and output? And sometimes I'll decide, yeah. And then I'll match those, what was it, 15, 16? 
gosh, I got to set my inputs and outputs for this session. Um, and then I'll also, you know, highlight the one that I imported and look in this uh, mix window. Um, and I'm actually, I don't want the narrow mix. I want the full mix. Um, so now I find this piano track and I can check to see if there are any sends. So there is a send here. So I might then want to hold option to drag the send over exactly as it is and just duplicate it onto this existing track. I'll also often what I'll do is I'll, for a starting point, I'll set these faders at the same exact spot and I'll set the pan at the same exact spot. Um, I just kind of go through and try to make the tracks match. And then once I'm happy with whichever one I have matched, so either this one or this one, it's, you know, it just depends on which one you've decided to keep. Um, I will then either hide and make inactive this original one, for example, if I had playlists, or sometimes I'll just straight up delete it. Um, I don't have any playlists here, so there's not a lot to lose by deleting it. Um, or you could delete this one if you decided to copy everything over onto this track. Now this is no longer relevant, so I can just then go and delete this track. And then I'll also go through and make sure that I don't have automation on any of these plugins. So I'll open up this automation lane here and I'll make sure I don't have an automation option for any of my plugins because if I added automation on a plugin, um, you can probably bet that there is an automation graph here with data, with changes that I'm not gonna want because they aren't gonna be relevant to this song. So um, I'll often then go make sure that I clear that data as well before I then move forward with adjusting all these plugins and all this automation to this current song. So that's the basic idea. I just um, import session data, find a song that's by the same artist that has treatment that I like that I want to duplicate and then I just copy it over this way um, and that's the basic idea. So importing session data can be really handy in maintaining that you know cohesiveness between different tracks. It just helps you save a lot of time by jumping ahead in the mix a little bit, right? So now I don't have to individually add these. I have these as a starting point that I can now jump off of. So I found it really useful. I hope you guys found this useful. Um, let me know what you think in the comments below. And as always, like, comment, subscribe, hit the notification bell. If you want to support my channel more directly, I do have a Patreon, and it's patreon.com slash Noise. And I recently uploaded a uh, mixing checklist onto my patron-only resources on my website. So if you are a patron, you will get access to that. And this is one of the tips on that checklist. So um, the idea of importing session data from previous songs by the same artist to save time. So I think that's about it. I come out with new videos every Wednesday and thank you for watching. Okay, it's like really hot. It's really hot today and I am upstairs where all the heat goes. So that's fun with a bunch of lights in my face. <sighs> it's gonna be okay. All right, so I think I think that's it. See ya.